ガンダムフェニーティリナースタがもらった Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Samuel X channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Gundam Venice Rinashkita. It's a very rare situation. I'm doing a back to back review. So, last week is the Shenlong Gundam Liaoya unit, and this week is the Gundam Venice Rinashkita. So, again, before the whole review starts, just a little bit of own personal feeling.、Uh, I really wish that Bandai would consider to release the Wing Gundam Venice because that unbalanced design. I really like it, and maybe I'm going a little bit more greedy. I wish they can release the Gundam f e n i s Liberta as well, because the Liberta I reviewed a long time ago at the high grade video.、Uh, it was one of the coolest designs that I see. This is what I call Bill Fighter's design, because combining the motorbike with the Gundam is actually a really creative idea, so, which is why Gundam f e n i s Um, Liberta is always my favorite. But anyway, today let's focus back on our dear、uh, Venice r e n a s c i t a right here. So, overall, the finish is actually pretty nice. Although, this the V part might be a little bit questionable, I'll talk about that part later.、Um, overall, the body, the colors, I absolutely love it, especially with those you know, very limited decals. Actually, a d d e d a bit better finish for overall. First, let's talk about the level first of this Master Grade right here. This Master Grade, because it's using the Universal Runner of the Wing series, so of course, some of them will be left out because, you know, build fighters, they often have their own design,、uh, no matter it's the frame or the outside armor. But this time, surprisingly, the armor actually h a v e no level first, is actually the inner frames. For example, for the G Runner, we got some skirt armor got left out, and then we also got like a back of the head that got left out, and the rest of these, I'm not exactly sure. For both of the H Runners, we got like some inner frame leftovers, like for example, the legs part, feet part, and then、uh, somewhere here, I'm not exactly sure which part are these. And for the F Runner right here, Uh, I can only tell that this is part of the front waist, and that's it. So, actually, this is a regular release, but it's still got a lot of leftovers. As usual, we will always start with the head. So, before the articulation, let's briefly talk about the design right here. For the head design, I prefer the Wing Gundam version because the Venice version,、uh, the eyes were just too small, and you can barely see them. So, I don't really like that. Let's start the articulation now. So, first, we can lift up because just like the Shandong Gundam,、uh, WW Universal Runners, they got the、um, lift up angle. So, which was why lifting up is pretty nice. Lift down, and then we can move 360 as well because there's no interruption around the chest. So, the head's movement is really free. Take a look at the chest right here. I think the Venice version and the Wing Gundam TV version, the only difference is that the Uh, Venice version, the heat radiation vents, they were shorter, and the wing version, they are longer. And again, just like the Shandong Gundam, because you know, the wing frames they came from like early 2010, 2011, somewhere around that. So back in the days, they don't have a lot of complicated joints in the torso, which was why it's still a big ball joint. So, but、uh, it can move a little bit more than the Shandong Gundam, right? It still have like, like the front and back, side to side, although it's just a big standard ball joint. To open the cockpit is actually pretty easy. Just pull down this part, pull out the central right here, and then lift up. And then you can see the pilot inside of it. Well, or I should say builder. So、uh, here you go. This is the builder. But you know, I wish they can change it to standing position because from my memory, build fighters, I think they were holding two electrical b a l l and then they were controlling the gunpla. So. I think they should be standing and not sitting. So let's take a look at the arms articulation right here. So, first, 360 is possible, but you have to move out the wings and then lift up. We can lift up around like、mm, 90 degrees. Yeah, somewhere around 90 degrees. And then the whole arm can rotate as well. And we also got like a little bit of movement at the side of the shoulder right here. At the top of the shoulder, when you open it, you can see a small thruster inside of it. The shoulder can move down. This part right here is for the transformation. The bending angle though is actually really nice, touching the shoulder. It's different than the Shandong Gundam. The Shandong Gundam can bend like a little bit more than 90 degrees. This one right here is almost touching the shoulder, so I think it's acceptable. The whole arm can move to the front as well. There is an individual joint inside the hand, so which is why the hand can move a little bit more. 
At the back of the arms right here, we got some claws right here. The claws though, you can move them as well. The back of the arm can move out as well. This part is used for the transformation. For the optional hands, because the wing series is the universal runner, so which is why you have to still using this kind of switching hands that you have to, you know, pluck off the bottom of the hand and then pluck on which whatever hands that you want to use. We got three types of hands. The open hand, we got the holding hand, and then we also got the trigger hand. Time for us to check out the waist part. So the waist part right here, mm, it is just like the Shandong Gundam. It's a little bit awkward. I don't know how did they design this kind of waist right here, but the waist right here is pretty weird for the articulation. So first, um, this one right here is better than Shandong Gundam. It can lift up 90 degrees. You know, you can also move side to side and then you can adjust the position up and down as well. And for a side skirt right here, you can also lift up. And then when you pull out a little bit, you can also move further as well. I think this part is for the transformation. In the back skirt right here, we can also lift up and then, you know, move down as well. So let's check out the legs articulation right here. So first kicking to the front, 90 degrees, kicking to the back. If you move out the back skirt, I think it's still close to 90 degrees. And then kicking to the side right here. Uh, okay, let's just move out this part, kicking to the side, mm, because the side skirt is actually pretty long, so it's bumping into the armor, so I would say close to 90 degrees, but not quite. For the bending though, wow, U-shape, and then we can see the linking effect, wow. And then this piece of armor right here, you can lift up, and then you can see there's a hidden thruster right here. This thruster right here, you can also move a little bit as well. And turn it to the back of the leg right here. These kind of thrusters, you can also adjust them as well. Take a look at the feet right here. The tip of the feet can bend down as well. This part is for the transformation as well. And then the whole feet, um, because it's a ball joint, so... You know, it's pretty hard to move as well if you want to move it. And also, I actually recommend you don't play with the feet too much because inside the structure right here, the feet, is actually a C-shaped C joint. It's called, I think it's called C-shaped joint. Yes, the C-shaped joint. And if you play with it too much, it will eventually damage it and it's very easy to be snapped in half. So for the feet, um, I recommend you you know, don't play with it too much. Let's check out the wings now. I actually really like these colors right here. Maybe because I'm just tired of seeing the same color on the Wing Gundam TV version. So, which was why sometimes you just switch the colors around and it gave me the freshness. So, quickly check out the movement. So, side to side, move up and down. You can move, also move like this. And then there's an extra joint inside the backpack where you can lift up further. You can extend the wings right here. And this red piece right here, you can move 180 as well, I think. Yeah, it's, a summer. Yeah, it's 180. I think it's time for us to go through the accessory. So first accessory that we got is the beam mantle. You always see this in the anime where the Venice will, you know, kind of lay out the clock and then, you know, blocking the beam attacks or forming it and then you know enhance the punches this one right here is the beam mantle so first we got a little bit of movement so you can kind of expand it i actually really like this design right here because you know if you can pose with it more and then try to make it look natural so the articulation right here is pretty good so to equip it on is actually really simple you just have to find a spot and then clip it in and there you go and it's really stable so you don't have to worry about like oh what about I play with it for a couple times? Does it fell off? No, you don't have to worry about that. It's really stable. The next one is the shield right here. So as you can see right here, the shield, you can see like sort of like a eyes right here. I would say is the eyes during the Neo Bird mode. Well, or now is called, well, actually, I don't know the MA mode name of the Venus right here, but you know, it looks like the Neo Bird form anyway. So first let's check out the articulation. So at the bottom of the shield right here, you can see there's a thruster. You can move up and down as well. And then for the handle right here, you can move up and down. This piece right here connected to the forearm, you can also move it as well. The tail of the shield can also be moved as well. If you open up the shield just like this, if you open up the shield right here, you will see a beam saber hidden in there. And here is the beam saber effect part for you to put it on and pose with it as well. The shield is actually more difficult than I imagined. So it's very hard for me to show you on camera because off camera, I've been trying to put on the shield for around like 10 minutes. So it's very hard for me to show you. So how about we just run through how 
how do you put on the shield like first you need to use the holding hand and then go through the handle then you need to go to the back right here connect the piece connect the shield piece right here at the back of the forearm and then switch it to the front again and then put in put in this kind of clip in the thruster and then sort of like stabilize it the last accessories that we got is the buster rival custom right here so for the buster rival custom i think there's around like three types actually four forms so first form right here is the form that you combine both of the is it a pistol well anyway it's the pistol and the buster rival together and you can separate them and then hold them individually you can see that the handle can move it as well and also there's a little bit like a hidden gimmick right here where you can pull that and then pull out the battery as well if you want and also the buster rival you can move the handle as well and this beam handgun right here you can further remove it and then actually turn it into a what's that called turn it into like an individual beam saber beam dagger and use it use it like this so i think the idea is actually really cool and when you attach the beam effect part on the buster rifle custom right here it really looks like you're shooting at the front so i think that helps for you if you are uh, shooting photos like myself i think it's time for us to play with the transformation so first we need to move the head facing back uh, it might be a little difficult so like this turn the head facing back and then we need to pull down the hands so we don't need the hands and lift up both sides and then open up the hidden thruster inside the shoulder then we'll need to open up the back of the forearm and then moving down and then try to clip into the right place right here so make sure make sure you clip into the right place and now just slightly adjust the arms now fold the feet And then adjust the legs to a position like this. Open up the side right here. Flip the piece at the bottom of the side skirt. Extend it and clip onto the side of the legs right here. And now flatten the wings and equip the shield on and then clip back in. So it should be wrapping the head like this. And lastly, we just need to reconnect this small piece right here. Move up and then put on put on the beam rival or hand pistol whatever that calls but it's pretty unstable for the buster rival side because the buster rival side is really heavy and the joint is actually not that good so it cannot really hold the rival all right guys this will be the end of the video thank you guys for watching this video first i would like to give my quick summary before i end this video so um, for the AMA transforming part, it's a little bit confusing, especially when the instruction menu doesn't really give you clear on how do you, you know, fold the legs. It's really confusing, actually. You need to take some time and take a look at the instruction menu before you bend the legs or something like that. And also, another part that is pretty disappointing is that the AMA form, uh, where the bust arrival is sep separated into two and then mounted on each back uh, back of the forearm and the bust arrival side is actually hanging around and is it's just a little bit of disappointment but i will say that overall this is a pretty good gobbler uh, the design is amazing the articulation is pretty nice as well and also for those of you that like transform i think you'll have fun with this it's just be careful with the likes and you'll be all good thank you guys for watching this review make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified whenever i upload a new video and i'll see you in the next review goodbye